there is none holy as the Lord of me. There is none beside you. Neither is there anyone like our God. There is none holy as the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, there is no one holy like you. We love you. We appreciate you. We glorify you. We magnify you, we exalt your holy name. And we thank you, O Lord, for giving us this blessed opportunity to be in your presence. We say thank you, O Master, for giving us your life, shedding for us your blood, and giving us the every blessing from heaven and earth, and telling us, O Lord, you are my children. Thank you, Father, for that great privilege. We love you, we appreciate you, we glorify you in Jesus' name. Father God, we ask this prayer. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. May the name of the Lord be glorified this evening for this uh, blessed opportunity. I'm so glad to have my brother from Nepal, Pastor Solomon Taman. I'm so glad to have him with us today. Blessed. We have a history to say more than 20 years. And uh, Pastor Solomon said to me, to, to my wife, Sissy, I know your husband before you know him. <laughs> so we have, me and Pastor Solomon have more relationship <laughs> of almost 23 years relationship. Praise God for that uh, blessed relationship. We are still in good relationship, good friends. And thank God for the good friendship. One of these days, he will surely be ministering in one of these meetings. And uh, I love him with all my heart. He's a true man of God who, who loved the Lord. And uh, he is a blessed man. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And I'm so glad uh, that uh, Pastor Johnson Thomas has joined from all the way from Cochin, Kerala. Uh, we have uh, lots of communication through uh, WhatsApp. There are many times when I was down, you know, spiritually down, not spiritually down, mentally down. Pastor will send a message to me. I don't know whether he's sending to thousands of people, but some of those messages were so personal to me and uh, I felt lots of time boosted up and blessed. And it's, so I, I, love, I, will, I love him. I always tell my wife, I know Pastor Johnson Thomas, he's a true man of God. And we met him, I, we met each other last year on a wedding. Um, uh, one of my good friends, Pastor Sabu Pastor's son in Muscat, he was getting married. So, we met there in, uh, I think it was in Alapura, in Kerala, we met. And he phoned me, we had a good chat, and I'm so glad uh, for the blessings uh, that the Lord is giving. I'm so glad to have my good friend, uh, Anil Lukos, from, uh, from all the way from Canada, uh, Torrent, uh, from Vancouver, and all the other people who have joined, all the men, of, men and women of God and pastors, reverends, bishops, if I miss anybody, please, May the Lord richly bless us all. Hallelujah. And uh, I am so glad for the blessings that the Lord is giving into our life. Today, I am not going to preach a long sermon, as that what all the pastors say, so me also. Uh, Raijin is already laughing, my smiling. Thank you, Raijin, for a good smile. <laughs> um, but I'm going to take a word for you today. Today I wanted somebody else to preach. And uh, I thought I can give to somebody else. But the Lord was not allowing it. I don't know why. He was not allowing it to happen. So I believe um, there is something the Lord has for you. And uh, so we will surely look into the word and the name of the Lord will be glorified. Thank you, Jesus. Today I would like to talk to you about two things. One is about renew your mind and also about the anointing of the Holy Spirit. There are two things that I would like to talk to you today. And I believe today the Lord is going to deliver people from the bondages that they are in. 
even though we are believers, there are lots of bondages that people are in. Many times we say the moment a person is in Christ, the curses are broken, afflictions are gone. But even then, there are lots of people who struggle in life. I was talking to somebody recently, and uh, then I began to talk to somebody else, the third person, the fourth person, the fifth person. Uh, when I was talking to three, four, five people in the last one week, you won't believe in the last one week, people came with difficulty sleeping in the night, especially people, somebody holding their neck in the night, you know, in the spiritual realm, hitting on their face and hitting on their cheeks. Biata, you're welcome. We just started the meeting. Thank you. Hello. Yeah. yeah. So um, you can mute Biata. Thank you. Yeah. But, so when we look into all these things, we will understand that um, we will understand that even though we are strong believers, many times we, without knowing, there are struggles in life which we want to get out of. We proclaim things by faith. We proclaim things by faith and say, the Lord is mighty, the Lord is powerful. But even though we proclaim by faith, there are things that's not changing in life. I remember when, when I was in Nepal with Pastor Solomon in our first meetings, second meetings and third meetings when we were in, uh, in, in, in Nepal. The powerful meetings that the Lord has given us in Nepal. How mightily the Lord has moved in Nepal. How tremendous it was to see the power of God moving in Nepal. See, one thing I can confirm, when your mind is ready to accept Him, when your heart is ready to receive Him, He will work miracles in your life. That's where many people fail in life. We are ready to accept him in our words, but deep inside our heart, in our heart, we are not able to receive him the way he is. It's, and that's a tragedy that many, of, many Christians face. When we pray for an unbeliever, the unbeliever gets healed in an instant. But many times when we pray for a believer, it takes months and years for a believer to get healed. Now, this is where we need to understand that after being in the Lord for so many years, many of our hearts are hardened. Our minds are not renewed. We think it's renewed. It's not renewed. It's still the same. We are still the same people. We have not changed much. So, because of that, what we need to have is a renewal, change of our mind. That's what we need, change of our mind. And when our mind is changed, when we know that our mind is changed, okay, so when, if our mind is not changed, it, it becomes difficult for God to work in our life. It becomes difficult for the God to work in our life. So what the Lord needs, that's, a, that's the reason the Bible says, renew your mind. Renew your mind. Now, many people, those who are getting attacked while they are sleeping, if you look at it, 99% of the attack happens only when you sleep in the night, not, not during the daytime. Not during the daytime. It happens in the night. Why it happens in the night? Because automatically when people are sleeping in the night, they have a thinking that it is dark. Many people get fear, more fear in the night than the daytime. Why? Because people get lots of negative thoughts in the night. Because there is nothing for us to do. When there is nothing for us to do, what happens? When there is nothing for us to do, we begin to think and think and think. And then all of us, all the imaginations, everything that we heard come. And when everything that we hear come into our minds, 
And that's the time, what happens, that's the time we, without our knowledge, we begin to think about unnecessary things and our mind get disturbed. And there, when we think about all things that we heard and we went through, people cry in the night, people weep in the night, people uh, uh, broke, get broken hearted in the night, people live in fear, they cannot sleep. And why? Because their mind is not renewed. They are not able to receive Jesus. They are not able to think about the goodness of Jesus, but they are thinking more about the fear that is in them. Now, when a child grows up, when a child has gone through pains in life, even though a child is grown so big, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years, still the pain still remains. So that's where we need the presence of Jesus to come into our hearts, come into our minds, and change us and transform us. We need to know that there is power in the name of Jesus. There is mighty power in the name of Jesus. When we use the name of Jesus, Bible says, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. By the mention of the name of Jesus, when we mention the name of Jesus, what happens? Things will begin to change. Things will begin to get automatically moved. That's where we need to use the name of Jesus. Now, in, the, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, Bible says, Holy Spirit dwells in you. It says, we are the temple of God. So Bible teaches us, we are the temple of God. Now, when we, when we use the name of Jesus, we must have the courage to use his name. The courage. Many times, people go to bed with the reading Psalms 91. They think that when they read Psalms 91, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my portrait, my rest. Oh, you know, they feel that the Lord is there. Why? That Psalms in your heart, you heard somewhere that if you read that Psalm, you will get protected. But we, don't, we have to understand more than that Psalm, there is someone standing next to you, and his name is Jesus. He is in your room, He is holding your hand, He is ready to give you a hug. He is ready to cherish with you. He is ready to laugh with you. He is right there with you beside your bed. And when he is there with you, what can come against you? It is not the Psalms that protects you. It is not the courage that protects you. It is the Lord Jesus Christ that protects you. And when you know that, when you know that, it, I know my Lord is there with me. And that's the time you get the courage and you will say, yes, I know it. When my son is sleeping, not now years back, when my son, when he when was very young, he will always say, Dada, stay in my room. So just imagine, I keep a photo of me in the room. I said, this is my photo. When you are afraid, look at my photo. He will not be satisfied. He will not be satisfied. I send him a letter saying that, Josiah, my dear son, whenever you are tired, read this letter. Dada loves you, Dada loves you. Mm. Dada, thank you. But even then, he won my presence. This is where we need to understand. Bible says in, in the book of Matthew chapter 28, Behold, I am with you till the very ends of the earth. He, Bible, in, in Psalms 46, it says, he is, a, he is a help in trouble, present help in trouble. He is right there next to you, Biata. He is right there next to you, uh, to you, Jesse. Then right there next to you, Pastor Solomon. He is right there next to you, Molly, and he is right there next to you. And that's where we don't get him. We always look and search him for everywhere without knowing he is right there, standing beside you. And when you know that when he's standing beside you, you know you will know his presence and his power. Let me tell you something which happened to us in the last one week. We went for a holiday from here. We went for a holiday um, to a place called Great Yamat. Five of us, we went from here. We went and we came back happily rejoicing. We had a blessed holiday. But now, on the second day of holiday, and the first day it was good, on the second day of holiday, I was just looking under the car and I found one of my tires, two of the tires of the car is in a very bad state. Very bad state. 
Now I thought of, I will go and change the tires. So I took that car to the garage to change it. When I went there, I found that there is a lock nut. That means there are five nuts on the tire, but one nut is a lock nut, which cannot be opened normally, which need a special lock to open, which I had in my car. I changed my tire two months back by myself. So it should be in the car. I searched all over the car, in and out. I pulled the car up. I car, I rip off the car and everywhere, but I can't find it. I went to six or seven places in all, all great Yama, get into deep villages to get it changed. Nobody can change it. And then I know in my heart, you know, I'm driving with my family and I am worried in my heart, thinking, Lord, what will happen? We have to drive 150 miles, around 220 kilometers, 200, more than 200 kilometers, 220 kilometers. And uh, the next day we sat together, we prayed. And I said to the family, let us pray. We will pray and drive. And, uh, but the thing, the reality of the matter, more than anyone, I know the condition of the car. Because of the lock that I cannot change it. We drove the car all the way from Great Yarmouth. There was no issue. Everything went perfect. But deep inside my heart, there is a little pumping. Boom, boom, boom. Thinking, you know, will we reach? When there is a sound, there is a sound. I always stop the car on the side and look. Everything, everything is perfectly fine. Everything is perfectly fine. We reach home happily, without any doubt, any struggle. Praise be to Jesus. Now, in the evening after coming here, I went outside to buy some shawarma. I we parked the car to buy the shawarma. After buying the shawarma, when we came back, the tire of the the, the tire of the car is flat. Is no air in it. It's gone. Just imagine all the way from Great Yama till here, the Lord protected us. But when we parked the car here, only to buy a shawarma. After coming here, we took bath, we slept, rested for two three hours. Then we went. I went outside to buy shawarma, and then I found the tire of the car is flat. Just imagine if it happens on the way. Just imagine if it happens while I'm driving. Why? Because a big screw has gone into the tire and it became flat. Just imagine if that screw goes into the tire when I was in Great Yamat, very far away. This is where we find the protection of the Lord. See, the Lord protects you wherever you are, whatever you do, the Lord protects you. The Lord always look after us. God is a good God. God is a loving God. He did not allow the screw to go inside my tire till I reached London, till I reached my home. When I reached home, it happened. Just imagine if it happens before. This is where we find this is the favor and protection of God. Amen. So in the same way we need to know we have to renew our mind. Renew our mind. When we renew our mind, we know, yes, I know my Lord is with me and I know He is with me. A couple of days ago, we were listening to Pastor Finney Stephen from um, Kerala. He was talking about the angels, ministering angels and archangels. One day I remember when I was preaching in the church, it was around 2011, I saw an angel standing in the church, angel. It was more than a small angel. The angel was beyond standing, beyond the roof. It, the angel was around, say, 30, 40 foot high. Huge angel. I saw it so clearly. And I said to the church, there is, Jesus is here, the angels are here in the church. I said, if anybody wants to lie down, kneel down and pray, just pray, Jesus is here, Jesus is here. And everybody felt the presence of God happen. Why? Let me tell you, there are angels standing next to you in the night when you sleep. When we renew our mind, when we, what, what do you mean by renewal? When you buy a house, what we do is that, you know, when you buy a house, if you are not happy with the house, what we will do, we will renovate it. We will go there, we will throw away all the furniture, we will take off all the wallpapers, we will take off the paints and everything, and we'll make, make the house more beautiful, attractive, coloring, color schemes, and lightings, and decorations, and furniture, carpets, we change everything. And when somebody comes in after that, they say, wow, this house looks beautiful. It was so shabby and dirty before. Now look at it, how beautiful the house is. And this is where we need to understand. When we are in Christ, what we need to do, we need to renew our house. 
we need to renew our mind. We need to renew it. We need to renew it beautiful thoughts. Not of bad imaginations or negatives. We need to renew it light that shines in the darkness with Jesus. We need to renew with the Holy Spirit. We need to renew our mind with promises. We need to renew our mind with the great and the mighty things that the Lord has done in our life. When we renew our mind like that, let me tell you, we will have the boldness in our life. If not, what will happen? We will be thinking and worrying about our future. Thinking and worrying about our future. Now, you know, when we, I'm trying to, I'm trying to teach something. When we are small and when we grow up, uh, those who wear the shoes will know this. Our parents teach us how to tie the knots on a shoe. Okay. And uh, after three, four years, and then we will learn ours. Uh, we look at the shoe and we'll take the shoe in our hand and we'll put that hook there on that side there. We'll uh, put it in between and we try to uh, pull it together. And one side is long, one side is short, and we try to pull the legs. After two, three years, what will happen? After two, three years, what will happen is when we have the shoes, without we knowing it, we tie the lace. We are talking to somebody. Ah, oh, hello there. Hi. I'm coming. I'm on my way. Okay. We are tying the lace. We are doing it even without knowing what we are tying as lace. How it happens? How it happens? That is experience. This is the same thing when we are with Jesus every day of our life. We don't have to sit and pray and cry, Lord, come, Lord, come, Lord, come. But the moment you are there, you know he is there in your room. Amen. You know it. You know in your car he is there. You know in your bathroom he is there. You know in your kitchen he is there. But you know when you book he is there. You don't have to bring him from heaven to earth. He is already there in your room. Those who are driving in the, those who are driving the car. When I learned the car, drive, drive the car first time, I was driving. And when I, uh, when I was driving for the first time, I remember when I was driving for the first time, uh, my cousin said, uh, put the brake, put the brake. I pressed on the accelerator instead of the brake. And the car went vroom, so fast. And when the car went so fast, I almost hit somebody and the person jumped out of the road to the side. And I thank God. And they put signal, signal. When we put signal, we'll put wiper. When we put say, horn, we put gear. My God, it was a trouble. But after six months, one year, we don't even know we are putting the gear, accelerator, signal, anything. It automatically happens. We only remember, how many of you remember now that you take the uh, gear while you, while you were driving? We don't even remember it. We just drive, we talk. Ah, yes, we eat some. Mm -hmm. We are driving, drinking coffee. Mm, we are driving. It happens. Why? It's because of experience. This is what happens when we renew our mind. In the beginning, we have lots of complicated. This is gear. This is the gear shaft. Oh, this is gear shaft. So where, where is a neuter? Front or back? Back or front? Or side? Where is the neuter? Go front. Oh, no, no, no. That's reverse. That's reverse. Back, back. Oh, that's forward. That's forward. You know, we are confused. And the car stops like this. And now when we drive, it's cool and easy. We talk to our children. We laugh. We listen to music. We preach. We talk. And we pray. We pray in tongues. We ride the car. We don't even remember we changed the gear. Why? Because it became easy for us. This is the same thing when we walk with Jesus. When your walk with Jesus becomes a daily thing. In your daily walk with Jesus, daily relationship with Jesus, daily confrontation with Jesus, daily communion with Jesus, daily fellowship with Jesus. You, without knowing, you will know he is there with you. You don't have to say, Lord Jesus, oh, the devil is coming. You come now, Jesus, fight the devil. You don't have to. Why? Because Jesus is there with you. The moment you feel that, you know, you feel in, your, in the presence that the devil is there, Jesus, the blood of Jesus, command you in the name of Jesus, the devil goes. Why? Because you are tuned to Jesus. You are tuned to Jesus. And this is what we need to know. Those who are not putting the note on the tie, single note, double note. You know, I, I learned that the difficult thing is putting the note on the tie. It's the most difficult thing. So that's the reason people buy the tie with already put the notes on. They will never un 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 unloose the note. They always keep the note on. So why? Because they have to just put it uh, that and gone. Let me tell you, once we learn how to put the note 
from the pipe, it becomes so easy. Without knowing if we are talking, oh yeah, yeah, it's done. How it happens? That is, and that's the experience that we should have with Jesus. Mm -hmm. For that, what we should do, my brothers and sisters, we should walk with Jesus every day. Amen. It, it should become a daily business for us. In the morning, lunch time, breakfast time, noon time, brunch time, supper time, see sleeping time, taking bath time, driving time, um, shouting time, every time you stay with Jesus. And when you do that, what happens, you know, it becomes easy for you. You will know his presence wherever you are. You will know him. And then you don't need to worry about it, anything. You don't need to worry about the devil coming in your room through the window or the, or the ventilation. No, you don't need to worry. Because his blood is covering the place. He's, he's protecting you. He is standing next to you. Today, while I am talking this, I know that the Lord is going to deliver people out of the bondages that you are in. I know you are going to set free. After this message, within a couple of days, we are going to receive testimonies. People saying very clearly that, Pastor, I've been going through a trauma like this, but the Lord has delivered me. Lord, in the name of Jesus, if anyone who is under struggle of demonic oppression and demonic attack in the night or in their dreams or in their vision, Lord, in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit, I command the Lord there will be a change in their life from right now. Let there be a change in their life from right now. Lord, they will not be, Lord, they will not be attacked. They will not be put down. But Lord, they will begin to see the manifestations of your glory in their room. There are people that there are people, the Lord saying, there are people who are listening to me right now, watching me right now. You are going to see the light of Jesus shining in your room. Somebody, you are going to see the light of Jesus shining in your room so clearly. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Because I could see that the light of Jesus coming into your room and setting you free. Your bed is going to be filled with the power and the light of Jesus. He is going to do it. So what do you need to do? Have fellowship with him. Have fellowship with him. Even now when I am praying, if you want to just want to close your eyes and you want to say, Lord, I want to see you. I want you to test me and I want you to come into my life. I don't want to be, Lord, attacked and pulled down, pushed by the devil at the attack. Lord, let it be emotional, let it be spiritual. But I, that's not my portion. My portion is with Jesus. My portion is with the Holy Spirit. My portion is blessing. I rebuke and I cancel every attack in my life in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. I declare, I declare in the name of Jesus, I am a new creation. My room is filled with the Holy Spirit. My life is filled with the Holy Spirit. I am a child of the Most High and I have authority and I declare every attack in my life and rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Declare that. Begin to declare that and invite Jesus into your life. No, this is what we need to do. When we begin to do that on a daily basis, the moment I get up in the morning, my daughter gets up. Nobody kisses me in my house like that. She comes running to me, mwah, 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 kiss me, and goes. You know how happy I become? I was oh, so happy. But let just imagine, you get a kiss from somebody who never kisses you. You say you you don't you don't even feel. But when somebody kisses you every day, I love you so much. You know, that expression, that expression, that what Jesus is looking from you. That what Jesus is looking from you. Why Jesus is looking from you, that expression is because Jesus loves you so much. He, is, he, he died for you on the cross. He passed, Jesus died for you on the cross. Because Jesus died for you on the cross. He, 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 what he, did he do? The Bible says, for God so loved the world. So what the, what the Lord is asking you to love him back, unlimited. You have to express your love. When you do express your love, that's a difference. That's a difference. Now, in I, when we read, see, this is the second phase of the teaching I'm doing today. We know, in the, we always talk about the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Infilling of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit comes in us. Holy Spirit comes in us, okay? As I said before, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, the Bible says, for, for a, when a person is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone. Everything has become new. Now, it's not talking about Jesus coming inside of us. 
it is talking about we are getting inside of Jesus. Mm-hmm. When a person is in Christ, you know, when a person is in Christ, now many preachers, many people talk about that like Jesus is coming inside of us. No, I am talking about not Jesus coming inside of us. I'm talking about we are getting inside of Jesus. Mm-hmm. That what Bible says, Jesus is inside of us 100%. I am not refuting it. I accept it. He is inside of us. The one who is in me is greater than the one who is in this world. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But at the same time, we also need to know when a person is in Christ, when you and me, we are in Christ, we are a new creation. Amen. Now, that is a process that Jesus is covering us. Now, this is the, one of the same processes that the Holy Spirit does. In the book of Acts chapter 2, verse 3 and 4, the Bible says, when on the day of Pentecost, when they gathered together, tongues, cloven tongues of fire, sat on them. Okay, sat on them. The power came upon them. And then Bible says, then they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in tongues. Two things happened there, two things. One, the power came upon them. Second, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Two processes happened. And we could say the third process was the Holy Spirit came through them. See? Three processes we could say. Now, many times we forget one of the most important processes of the Holy Spirit, which is coming upon us. We always talk about, you know why, my brothers and sisters, now, when I, when I talk to somebody, my, what I do is that I want to make you holy. Okay? I want to find the mistake in you. Ah, no, no, no. See, see, that's not good. When the Holy Spirit in you, you will not watch movie. When the Holy Spirit in you, you will shave. When the Holy Spirit in you, you will do this. When the Holy Spirit in you, you will put only white clothes. When the Holy Spirit in you, you know, we, we, we try to make people holy, thinking that when the Holy Spirit is inside of us, we have to do all these things. But let me tell you, we don't have to teach anyone holiness. The moment Holy Spirit comes, people will automatically begin to understand what holiness is. Mm-hmm. It is automatic. The moment you do as little mistake, Holy Spirit will convict you. You will be shattered. You will be brokenhearted. You will begin to say, Lord, I am sorry. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. That's the reason the Bible says, don't you know that we are the temple of God and the, the Spirit of God dwells in us. He is in us. But one thing people very rarely mention is of the Holy Spirit coming upon us. Now, in the Old Testament and in the Old times, even New Times, the shepherds take the oil and put on the sheep. Now, have you ever heard a shepherd giving oil for the sheep to drink? No. Anointing is not, always remember, anointing is not drinking the oil. Anointing, baptism, immersed baptism is not drinking the water. It is you are dipping in the water. In the same, anointing in the Holy Spirit always means you are covered by the Holy Spirit. It is not about bringing the Holy Spirit. Now, when you are covered by the Holy Spirit, Bible says, Jesus said um, in, the, in the book of um, Acts chapter 1 verse 8, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive power from above. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So, when are we going to receive the power? We are going to receive the power. We receive the power when the Holy Spirit come upon us. Come upon us. Now, in the Old Testament, if, if you want to read, write down, you can write down. In the Old Testament, in the, in the book of Numbers, chapter 27, verse 18, it's talking about Holy Spirit coming upon Joshua. In just Judges 3, verse 10, it's about Holy Spirit coming upon Othaniel. In Judges chapter 6, verse 34, Gideon, Holy Spirit coming upon Gideon. In Psalms, Psalms in, in Judges chapter 13, verse 25 and 14, 6, the Holy Spirit coming upon Samson. In Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 9, Holy Spirit coming upon Saul. In 1 Samuel chapter 16, Holy Spirit coming upon um, David in power. In all these places, we see Holy Spirit coming upon people. Now, this is the Old Testament. Okay, this is the Old Testament. This is not the New Testament. 
Now, we always say in, it happens only in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, many people don't believe the Holy Spirit coming upon you. But Jesus said so clearly, in, when, the, when, when, when the Holy Spirit come up, comes upon you, you will receive power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive power. He will clothe you with power. Amen. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be clothed with power. Amen. John the Baptist said, the one who is coming after me is greater than me because he is before me. He will baptize you with fire and the Holy Spirit. See, there also what we see is that the fire, he will baptize you with fire and of the Holy Spirit. See, when the Holy Spirit comes, it's a covering upon us. He is a covering. It, Holy Spirit is not it. Holy Spirit is a person. So Holy Spirit comes upon us and he covers us. This is where we need to understand, my brothers and sisters. When you are, uh, when Holy Spirit comes upon you, you are protected. Why Holy Spirit comes upon you is for you to empower you for ministry. Holy Spirit comes upon you to protect you. Holy Spirit comes upon you to empower you. Holy Spirit comes upon you so that you will be a different person than others. So the moment we receive Jesus, two things happen. Jesus comes inside of us, okay? At the same time, Jesus covers us. But when the Holy Spirit comes upon us, the what happens? We receive power. Mm -hmm. We receive power. Now, when we receive power, in, according to, according, in, in Luke chapter 1, verse 35, the angel of the Lord came to Mary and said, Mary, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And when we look at it, the Holy Spirit coming upon us is always to do a miracle in life. Holy Spirit coming upon you is to protect you. It's to preserve you. So that no attack will come near you. If you don't understand that there is a covering upon your life, you will be always be worried and afraid. Always be very afraid. A policeman, after wearing his uniform, when he goes and stands outside, people say in India, sir. Okay? Sir. But when a policeman without a uniform have no power, when, a, when he wears that uniform, he got power. He got authority. You need to understand this. When we are clothed with the Holy Spirit, you got authority and you got power. Amen. Holy Spirit inside of us, the one who is in us is greater than the one who is in this world. Holy Spirit inside of you will speak about the truth. And in John, I think it is in Gospel of John chapter 16, verse 13, it says, Spirit of truth. When the Spirit of truth comes, that is the Spirit of Jesus. And when the Spirit of truth comes, what will happen? He will lead us and guide us in all truth and righteousness. And what Holy Spirit sitting inside of us, Jesus sitting inside of us, will empower us, will give us the courage with the boldness and will say, go and do it. He will speak to us and say, lay hands and pray. Witchcraft, walk over it. He empower us. But what is the protection? Protection is the Holy Spirit upon us. He is upon us. That's the reason I said a couple of days ago, when we go out and preach and when we stand among the crowd, and when the people who have demonic oppression, demonic powers, when they look at us, you know, they look at us and say, fire, fire, pastor, don't come. Fire, fire, don't come near us. Where is the fire? Where is the fire? It is the covering that we carry. And that is the Holy Spirit. Amen. And that is the Holy Spirit. This is where we need to know, my brothers and sisters, when you are, when you are a believer, without any doubt, Holy Spirit lives in you. But you also need to know there is power that is upon you. Now, I will tell you one thing. You know, when we are ministering, I don't know how many of you have ministered in this way. Because I have been to the ministry, I'm saying this. When I travel to different countries and when I minister, when I stand and preach, for example, Pastor Solomon, if he is still there, he will know. Till the meeting starts, half an hour meeting before the meeting starts, we will begin to hold our hands and begin to pray. And three hours, four hours before meeting, we are eating momo. You know, the, the Tibetan food, momo. And we are having uh, chicken soup. 
and we are having roti and sabji and dal you know uh, we are having all those food we are cracking jokes and we are show, we are enjoying playing with kids cricket after 3 4 hours when we get into the stage when we come there we are totally different people we are no more who we were before and all of us and things changes at that time some at that time girls and boys are all sitting standing next to us that's be sitting and standing next to us they all they all joke crack joke with us and make fun with us hello uncle hello hello sir hello pastor but when the meeting starts these same people who are sitting there they begin to scream demons begin to come out of them demons begin to come before that they were playing because no demon came out of the but at that time when the meeting began to happen when the presence of the lord came the anointing came demons began to come out of them they get delivered sick get healed people come out of the wheelchair and walk people with um, you know legs like this get straightened and cancer get healed what happened because the power comes upon us a special tangible power come up so comes upon us we know how protected we are at that time we know how powerful we are at that time let me tell you that protection is upon each and every one who is watching today but what we need to know that we will know that protection only in our close walk and close relationship with jesus if we don't have that we will not recognize it so my dear my dear friends in when when we look at gideon bible says the spirit of the lord came upon gideon and he took a dog's jaw and he went and destroyed his enemies when the spirit of the lord came upon him in the same way the spirit of the lord is upon you to do miracles and wonders but why people are not using the spirit of god why people are not understanding the spirit of god because of the because our mind is not renewed we still live in the old ways we still live in our old patterns we still live in old lifestyle now before i stop the first time i'm saying before i stop i will say this you know there are lots of people who live in england live in england many of many many of us who are here today live in england or you live in another country look at your clothing how you wear the clothes look at the food style you have most 99 person the moment you enter into an indian house you will smell curry spices you will see the decoration of the house how the sofa look the couch look like the sofa look like the bed look like how people have put the clothes looking at it we know yes we know from where they have they are from because i'm an indian i have i can say this but the thing is we are heavenly citizens we are living on the face of the earth how we have to live we have to live like a heavenly citizen we cannot live like an earthly citizen we have to change our mind and we have to be we, we must begin to see that we are changed the people and that should come in our actions in our attitude in our words and then we will know that we are different we are different people and that, that's where you get the boldness if you don't know that you won't get the boldness see when when um, when we are when people are on student visa when they come through immigration or you know when people were afraid to come through immigration why because what the questions the immigration people will ask and all those things and after some time after that they got their work permits here or they got the job here and they settled here and they got british passport or american passport or canadian passport even after getting the canadian or american or british passport even when you go through immigration if you're shivering like this that means you know not not you are you don't understand the value of the passport you carry in the same way once we were in the world but now we are in christ we are in christ we are protected people mm-hmm. and if you don't understand the value you carry you don't if you don't understand that you are heavenly citizens and you have the capacity the power and the anointing to stand firm and go because bible says by the mention of the name of the moment you take the name of jesus his name has authority and power you must know that authority and that's what the lord want to remind you today
If you are worried, suffering, thinking about what will be happening to the future, what what my life will be, you know, why this is happening to me? Oh Lord, I'll be tonight when I'm going to sleep, what's going to happen? What attack is going to come? No, let me tell you, when you sleep in tonight, from tonight when you sleep, angels are going to minister to you. Amen. Your room is going to be filled with the angels of the Lord. Amen. Your filled room is still going to be filled with the light of Jesus. No demon can come into your room. Nothing can reach you because you are protected, you are preserved by the blood of Jesus. Amen. And know that. Know that. And don't worry about anything. But be confirmed that Jesus is in charge of your life. And he is looking after you. Mm -hmm. And he will provide all your needs according to his riches and glory. Amen. Let's close our eyes and let's pray. let's pray. Oh, dear Father, we thank you for this blessed, powerful evening you have given us. We love you, we worship you, and we adore you for this blessed time. We say thank you, O Lord, for giving us this opportunity. Father, we ask you, as we have heard your message, that we need to renew our mind. At the same time, we need to know the Holy Spirit lives in us and the Holy Spirit lives upon us. He comes upon us to empower us, so to use us for ministry, to protect us. At the same time, he is in us to guide us and lead us. We, I pray that, oh Lord, each and everyone, including me and my family and everybody, Lord, who is listening and watching, that I pray that, oh Lord, everyone from today will enjoy your presence and your power. And Lord, they will understand your protection in their life and they will be blessed. I give them in your hands. Be with them, bless them. And your name be glorified. In Jesus' name, Father, we pray. Amen. Amen. I share the grace and fellowship, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely your goodness and your mercy shall follow us days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of our Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.